Cool TV proudly presents Raceland Rams Softball as the Cool Hit Sports Network brings you coverage of the Rams live from Raceland, Kentucky. Now let's head to the field for the pregame show in Raceland Rams Softball live on Cool TV. Hello everyone, I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Puffin Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals and they offer 24 hours seven days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com when you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Where does your money go? When you bank with us, your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan. A real estate agent sells a house. They get a commission. They deposit it with us. We use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers. Hometown people helping each other grow. That's what it's all about. First in People's Bank and Trust Company, member FDIC. We are the home office. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osman Pharmacy and Grill today. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. Back here in Ramland as we get you set for Russell and Raceland. Probably the first time you've heard my voice because my producer turned on the wrong audio port earlier and didn't turn on the correct one. So he is a nice guy. He's still fired. But uh, either way, uh, first game for us here at the uh, beautiful new turf playing service for the Rams softball team. Uh, we'll be back here on Thursday night. They've got Greenup County in town. But uh, they come in at 5-0, and Russell at 3-2. and Raceland already with a district win over Lewis County up in Van or no, it was here last week. But um, this one, uh, this one should be a good one to kind of see where Raceland is. Are they where their record says they are, and how much they're going to kind of try to put a stranglehold against the 63rd district competition? We'll certainly see how that plays out. But uh, beautiful sun-drenched field here on the new playing service. I've talked with several of the players after they got a chance to get on it and start playing with it, and. Just they rave about how beautiful it is. It plays so nicely. You get true rolls. The hardest thing is learning how to slide on it. Uh, it takes a little bit after going from dirt 
off to the playing surface because you'll see players, they'll start to slide, and they slide their natural slide, and next thing you know, it's like a slip and slide on steroids and past the bag they go trying to grab on with their fingernails as they go fly past the bag. But um, we'll see how this one lines out. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineups tonight. We'll start first with a visiting uh, Russell Red Devils. Leading things off and playing in shortstop is Paige Hutchison. Batting second and second base is Gabby Oborn. Batting third at third base is Lily Smith. The pitcher is Andre Patel. Batting fifth in left field, Bella Hall. Batting sixth in center field is Avery Howard. Batting seventh at first base, Reese Cameron. Batting eighth as a right fielder is Carson Honecker. And batting ninth as a designated player is Ella Wilson. And doing the catching as the flex player today is Allison Highfield. So again, Hutchinson, Oborn, Smith, Patel, Hall, Howard, Cameron, Honecker, and Wilson. That's a starting lineup for Destiny Goins. Three and two, Russell Devils. Now for Scott Atkins in his first season here with the Rams at the head coaching position, and he has 5-0 and Raceland Rams. Leading things off at shortstop is Brenna Wellman, batting second and playing left field, Peyton Mackey. Batting third and catching is Callie Vance. The cleanup hitter is the pitcher, Devanna Grubb. Batting fifth at third base, Reagan Mackey. Batting sixth in center field, Bailey Burney. Batting seventh as the designated player is Lily Poplin. She'll hit in the spot for the right fielder, McKenna Lax. Batting eighth and playing first base is Savannah Ratliff. And batting ninth at second base is Shelby Gauss. Wellman, Mackey, Vance, Grubb, Mackey, Burney, Poplin, Ratliff, and Goss, starting lineup for the 5-0 Raceland Rams. Again, we'll be back with you here Thursday night as Raceland brings in Greenup County. Looking at the Rams so far, a big one to open things up on the first game of the season and to debut the new turf service. They knocked off the defending 16th region champ, Rowan County, 6-1. Took care of Independence, Kentucky on that Saturday. They beat them 10-0 in five innings. Then a 15-5 in six innings, win over Lewis County. Then the All-A Classic, they dispatched West Carter 15-0 in four. And then that last time out, 14-0 win over Wayne. They'll go to Chesapeake on Wednesday, then back here on Thursday against Greenup. And then they'll play on Sunday down at Fort Walton Beach. They've got two games scheduled, one at nine and one at three against Henry County and Corbin. They'll play Middlesboro, South Oldham, Owensboro, or Russell County. All of those teams down in Fort Walton Beach. And then their next game back home is on April the 10th. They'll be at Huntington. Next home game is against uh, Sims Valley. That's on April the 12th. Looking at Russell, fell six to, or eight to six in uh, Fleming County, the first game out. Bounced back with a 15-11 win over South Charleston. Knocked off Bath County 7-3, fell one short to Boyd County 3-2. And then last time out, defeated Pike County Central 9-5. Tomorrow they'll bring in Ashland. They go to South Point on Thursday. Then they go to Myrtle Beach for their spring break. They'll play Wilson Hall out of Sumner, South Carolina. Tontogany, Ohio. Wilson, New York. Aynor, South Carolina. And then back home against Colgrove on April the 9th. Couldn't paint a better picture for a ball game if you wanted to. Unfortunately, it's not going to hang around long. Uh, we're going to cool down and rain tomorrow and then probably threaten to get into the 60s at best the rest of the week as we look toward the middle part of the week into 63 and then back here on Thursday, probably around 60 with some mixture of sun and clouds. It's supposed to be windy most of the time, though. Have had wind pretty much blowing around the ballpark all day long and I've watched the flag, and it has just swirled. Sometimes it's pointing to the left field wall. Sometimes it goes right back in the face of the batter, and other times it's blown straight away to center field. And this is not a field that you want to, as a pitcher, you want to see that flag pointing toward US 23. Uh, that, that is not a, an easy ball to keep in this ballpark if it is out like that, and it can get out of here in a hurry. I have seen balls land on US 23, but Montana Fouts is probably the longest ball that I've seen hit out of this park. She hit one across 23 into the median. Um, that was when the regional tournament was here. Um, it, was a, it was an absolute mammoth shot that she got it out of here. But uh, I've seen several that's hopped onto 23, and there's a couple sticks in, in Raceland's lineup that can certainly get it there, one of those being the catcher, Callie Vance. Already three home runs on the season, at least for the stats that have been reported. There's still two stats 
sheets missing from the weekend. So all of our stats that we have are through the through three of the five games as posted. We have two that's missing, but we'll go with the ones that we've got from there. Scott Atkins, Destiny Goins meeting at home play with our umpiring crew tonight, going through all of the ground rules. But, again, everything here, turf. There is no dirt anywhere on either surface, both baseball and softball getting the new turf playing surfaces this season. Absolutely beautiful with that big Raceland R out there in the outfield. They did not put that Raceland R on baseball. That's another story for another day. And it looks much different. Um, I've flown the field from – my drone at 300 feet, and it just that R, that R pops. But, uh, I mean, it's a business card. When you drive down US 23 and you see baseball, football, softball, turf, it's absolutely breathtaking. The new school setting over there with it as well. I mean, it just it kind of sells itself. So, I don't know if they're making Dale Anthem with our next break, but we may have to burn a couple with it as we go to it from there. Let's go ahead and uh, step out for some breaks as uh, they've got a lot of introductions to do as well. So we'll step out, we'll come back, and get ready for softball. Russell and Raceland here from Ramland on Cool TV. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, this scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Fall hunting season is here. Border Sporting Goods has your best selection of Hoyt and Matthews bows as well as 10-point crossbows with a full selection of accessories for all your hunting needs. Borders also offers a full selection of shotguns and rifles with plenty of ammunition and reloading supplies, along with a wide selection of benchmark and case knives. Borders is your headquarters for the largest selection of Liberty gun safes in the area, no matter how big or small you need to keep your firearms safe. Before your next hunting excursion, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. They carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Catlettsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hello everyone, I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Weapon Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. 
River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, 7 days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com when you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Where does your money go? When you bank with us, your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan. A real estate agent sells a house. They get a commission. They deposit it with us. We use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers. Hometown people helping each other grow. That's what it's all about. First in People's Bank and Trust Company, member FDIC, we are the home office. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osman Pharmacy and Grill today. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. Our national anthem as we're ready to play ball here between Russell and Raceland on this beautiful evening here on this latter part of March. James Carr, happy to have you along with us here tonight. My crew, our executive producers, Travis Otworth on camera's field level is Felicia Collier. Happy to have everyone along with us here. Our first game of the 24th season. If we could just bottle this up and keep it all year long. The only thing I would say is give me snow on Christmas Eve and Christmas, about six inches of snow, and then you could give me this the rest of the year, I would be satisfied. A little breezy today, but uh, absolutely perfect evening. Play a little softball. So inside the circle for the Rams. Here's the junior Devanna Grubb. Off to a good start this year. The Rams starting off 5-0 already this year. She'll go to work on the top three of the order for Russell, Paige Hutchison, Gabby Oborn, and Lily Smith. Leading things off will be Paige Hutchison, the shortstop. Grubb settles in, gets the sign from Vance. Plate where she comes, and that one's in there for a called strike, and this ball game is underway. 534 first pitch, beautiful sun-drenched sky, 74 degrees with a bit of breeze out of the southwest. That'll push the wind over toward that left field corner. 
inside. It misses. Count evens at one and one. Defensively for the Rams, Mackey, Bernie, and Lax. Third to first, Reagan Mackey, Wellman, Gauls, and Ratliff. Vance behind the dish. And the right-handed junior, Devanna Grubb, inside the circle. The 1-1. One, one. Just misses. Two balls and a strike. Great crowd on hand here from both sides tonight. Taking a little Monday evening softball. Hutchison ahead, two and one. Grubb back to work. That one got her on the knee, so a leadoff runner aboard for Russell. And that'll bring in the second baseman of Gabby Oborn. Oborn shows bunt. That one gets down and past the catcher. That will allow the runner to move out to second base on the wild pitch. And I think they're going to say that the ball hit her. That's what they're trying to play. Now our umpire and crew is going to get together to have a conference early on in this ball game. This would be huge. Put two runners on instead of just a runner at second. This goes back. It has to be at the umpire at the home plate. Now they're going to say she was hit. So back to back hit by pitches. So Hutchison and Oborn aboard. And the big sticks coming to the plate with Lily Smith and Audrey Patel. So Lily Smith climbs in. Smith batting 636, seven hits, nine driven in, two home runs, and a double. Misses low for a ball. That one's in there at the waist for a called strike. Count evens at one and one. Two on, nobody out. Great look there at the beautiful Turf, all turf playing surface. A little bit of wind dancing up again. Oh, you see center field flag there dancing away from the mast. Here's a chopper out toward Wellman. She takes a hard hop and can't play it down. So two hit by pitches and an error by the shortstop. And the bases are juiced here in the first. So Andre Patel steps in. Patel batting 364 on the season. She's driven in six. And before we get a pitch to her, the infield's going to come together. So danger zone here for the Rams to open up the first with two hit batters with Hutchinson and Oborn. And then Smith reaching on an error to the shortstop. And now Devanna Grubb's going to have to pitch herself out of a jam here in the first as Russell threatens to dent the scoreboard early. Tell with a chance to stake her cause early on. She rockets this one out to left field. That one's over top, and one hops off of the wall. One runner's going to score. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's not going to be in time. It's going to be a two RBI double by Andre Patel, and Russell grabs an early 2 0 lead. And then they sneak in another runner there at the end. So make it 3 nothing. And then Patel moves up to third on the play. So now infield's going to have to come in. And Scott Atkins is going to come out and have a word with his players now. So all of a sudden, 3 nothing. Two hit batters, an error, and then a two RBI double by Patel, and then they snag a bag on the backside of the play. And Destiny Goins is 
homecoming back to Ramland is starting off nicely for her new job in the maroon and gold. We're going to run her for the pitcher. As Taylor Groves will check in. She'll be running over at third base. And at the plate is the left fielder, Bella Hall. Hall batting 500 on the season. Six hits, four driven in. Three nothing, Russell early. Beautiful pitch right there, called for a strike. 0 and 1. Outfield straight away and deep. Infield playing in on the right, on the left side. Ratliff in front of the bag. Gauls playing back deep at second. The 0 1 goes with a drop ball that gets out in front of the plate way too far. 1 and 1, the count evens. One one, shows bunt fouls that one straight back. One ball and the two strikes. Three runs, one hit, one Raceland error. All battling down one and two. Still nobody out here in the first. Already three nothing. Goes upstairs, but she won't chase. Two two. Grub laboring here in the first. 2-2, two -two, ripped into the gap. Bernie on her horse. That one's going to fall in and bring home another run. It's an RBI single for Bella Hall. 4-0 Russell. So still nobody out, and to the plate comes Ava Howard. Howard, an eighth grader, playing center field for Russell. Settles in from the right-hand side. First pitch misses low and inside for a ball, 1-0. Oh. 2-0. Back up on the rubber to the plate she comes. That was right down the pipe with a swing and a miss. Two balls and a strike. Russell already with four across. Two hit batters. A reach on an error by Smith. Patel with a two run double. They sneak another run across with a stolen base on the end of the play. And then Bella Hall with an RBI single. Three balls and a strike to the center fielder. Grub back to work. This one's fouled straight back and that takes the count full. It's over top of the fence and they corrals around the park here and rolls up a couple number, under a couple of cars behind us here. Three balls, two strikes, haul over at first with the RBI single, four nothing here in the first. Payoff pitch. Little slow chopper back toward Gall. She'll make the grab and the stab. She'll flip it out to Wellman for the play. They get the force out, one down. So four to six on the put out. And that brings in the first baseman, number 31, Cameron Reese. Reese batting 100 on the season, only one hit. That was a called strike. She also reached on a walk. Good inning for Russell. They're trying to bat through the order the first time to the plate here in the first, already leading 4 0. Swing and a miss. Crub puts a little extra cheese on it with the screwball and gets ahead, nothing in two. 
See if she goes upstairs here. Right hander back to work, the 0-2. And she does so with a swing and a miss. First strike out of the basketball or the, the basketball game. I knew it wouldn't take me long to say it. First strike out of the softball game. Two down in the inning. It's not as called uh, 14 games in Moorhead and I think another 12 down in Lexington. So, so two away and the right fielder Carson Honaker in. Howard over at first base. This one's lifted skyward, gets out of play. What's that? Well, you never know. The 0 1. Foul straight back, nothing in two. Good look there into the batter's box as Grubb and Vance go back to work. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that'll end the inning. But Russell dents the scoreboard with four hits, two runs on one race on the air. They leave a runner aboard. 4 nothing as we go to the bottom of the first inning here on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring, 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years, featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring in Greenup, 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Bottom of the first inning, 4-0. Russell jumps out in front. Let's take a look at the Rams lineup again, leading things off. And playing at shortstop is Brenna Wellman, batting second and left field Peyton Mackey. Catching and batting third is Callie Vance. Devanna Grubb will be the cleanup hitter inside the circle. Reagan Mackey goes fifth from third base. The center fielder, Bailey Burney, bats sixth. Lily Poplin is the designated player. She bats seventh, batting eighth and playing first base, Savannah Ratliff, and batting ninth at second base is Shelby Gauze. Defensively for Russell, Hall, Howard, and Honaker. That's left to right. Third to first, Smith, Hutchinson, Oborn, and Cameron. Highfield behind the dish and the right-hander of Andre Patel inside the circle. So Brenna Wellman to lead things off, batting 400 on the year. A pitch to the outside corner for a call and strike. Patel comes in with a record of 2-1, and one, a 3.39 ERA. 20 and two-thirds innings of work, 25 hits, 16 runs, 10 earned. Striking out 28, walking only five. The 0-1. That one misses high for a ball, 1-1. One one. Patel offers... A good screw ball. She likes that rise ball. Really likes to feature it when she gets ahead in the count. Well, one with great speed at the top of the order. The 1 1. Goes upstairs and comes up empty. 1 and 2. Well, when Mackey and Vance. Three that'll go here for the Rams in the home first. Down 4 0. Patel back to work. Misses a wide count evens at two balls and two strikes. Rams back in action on Wednesday. Then back here Thursday against Greenup County. We'll be with you. Here's the 2-2. This one's weakly down the left field line and foul. Just past the white lines on the turf. 
Count goes or stays at two balls and two strikes. Well, when settles back in, Patel ready to go, the 2 2. Inside is a full count. What the Rams have to do, you can't get them all back on one swing yet, but got to work some base runners on board. Patel into a payoff pitch against the leadoff hitter, Wellman. Here it comes. She misses high ball four, and Wellman gets on the board with a leadoff walk to start the home first. And that brings to the plate the left fielder, Peyton Mackey. Mackey batting 600 on the year. She's driven in three with a double. Six hits to her credit. Good speed as well. Wellman with great speed over at first base. Patel grabs the upper half of the zone for a cold strike, 0 1. Wellman four for four in stolen base attempts. The Rams 12 of 13. Shows bunt, and this one's sent foul up into the air. Count goes to nothing in two. Four runs on two hits and a race on the error. Staked Russell a four nothing lead. And this is where Patel gets very dangerous. And an 0-2 count. That one misses down and away. That one gets past the catcher on a pass ball. Wellman will take second base. And the Rams with a runner in scoring position here in the bottom of the first inning. Down 4-0. Your first time with us here on Cool TV. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you see something you like. Hit that bell. We'll alert you each time we put out new material. Mackey back in, the one two from Patel. Misses high, count evens at two and two. 65 games between our four partner schools. Race on Lewis County, East and West Carter for the regular season. And then 20, I think it was 27 more over in KCU for baseball and softball. Two two, sneaks that one in at the belt for a call strike three, one down. And to the plate comes Callie Vance. Vance tearing the cover off the ball so far. Batting 800 on the season. Of the stats that are posted, she's 8 of 10. Nine RBIs, a double, three home runs. With first base open, I would not give her anything across the plate. They try to work down in the zone and misses low for a ball, 1-0. Well, went out of second base, great speed. Any ball down to the outfield would allow her to come to the plate easily. Patel will look at the wristband. To the plate she comes. That misses up and away for a ball. Count it 2-0. Oh. Again, I don't know that either of these two pitches that have missed have been misses because they were trying to be too, too fine. It's put them out there, but don't put it over the plate. Do not allow her to square one up. 2-0, and she rockets this one to straightaway center field. That one's going to get over top and up against the wall. Wellman on her horse. She'll come to third base. She'll come and slam on the brakes. As she had to wait to make certain Howard didn't get there. A little gust from the gods there cost Vance, but she'll come in with a double. Her fourth of, or her second of the season, and the Rams with two on and one out, and Devanna Grubb at the plate. Wellman had the hold to make certain that Howard wasn't going to chase it down. So we'll get a runner for the catcher out at second base. We can see who. I can't see the number of the player coming on. There we go. So Rife taking the place of the catcher, Vance, out at second base. 
So two on, both in scoring position, one down, and Devanna Grubb to the plate. Grubb batting 333 on the year. She's driven in four. She has one home run. Perfect pitch right there on the outer half of the plate for a cold strike, nothing and one. Infield playing back. They're going to surrender the run on any ball hit in the infield and take the out at first with one down already in the frame. The only one to Grubb. She lifts this one weakly skyward. Smith over against the fence. She'll make the catch, two down. So it's up to Reagan Mackey. Two ducks on the pond. Rams are going to find a way to get them across. Down 4 nothing here in the first. Mackey second on the team, batting 600 on the season. She's driven in three with a double. Excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong spot there. Of course, I get the names wrong. Peyton and Reagan. Reagan Mackey. Batting 286 on the season. Five runs driven in with one home run. That one home run was a grand salami. That was against Rowan County in the season opener. Snap the 1 1 tie. Count evens at a ball and a strike. 4 0 here in the first. Two on, two down for the Rams. The 1-1, one, one. just low. Looked like it had all kinds of plate, but low in the box. Two and one. Bernie would go next. Mackey settles back in. Patel ready to go back to work. The 2-1 offering. She held up on that one. It's called a strike either way. The count evens at two and two. Two's wild across the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here on the first. Four nothing. Russell in front. The Rams threatening with two runners in scoring position. The 2-2 two -two offering. Cue ball down the first base side. That's a fair ball as it spun back in fair territory. Cameron scoops it up and makes the play and ends the inning. So the Rams strand two, they get none. They trail it four nothing after one inning of play. We're back for more after this on Cool TV. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporty Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size with a wide selection of tackle for Bird Loop, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. We go to the top of inning number two, 4 nothing Russell. 9-1-2 and two to up this inning for the Red Devils. And Ella Wilson to start things off. The designated player for the Red Devils, batting 273 on the season. Three hits, one driven in. The Rams come up empty in the first on a cue ball down the line, right at the bag. Depending on what color you're wearing is whether you think it was fair or foul. I have a giant bar in front of me, and I couldn't lean over enough to tell exactly where it was, so I can't give you one or the other. A one misses downstairs for a ball one and one. They're going to check down at first base. Mr. Royster says no, she did not. Wow. 
upstairs off the glove to the backstop. Two balls and a strike. Couldn't have asked for a better start for the Red Devils. They got two hit batters to lead things off. Reached on an error with the third batter. And then an R two RBI double. And then snuck another run around on the back side of it. Good play there by Bailey Burning out in center field. One down. That goes back to the top of the order. And Paige Hutchinson. She led things off with that hit by pitch. Her and Oborn both. She rockets this one over into the bullpen as a foul ball. Throw her a changeup now and see her swing out of her cleats and come up with like a Bugs Bunny swing. She was about two minutes out in front of that one. This is where you want to drop in the drop ball. A one gets her to go after it. It's going into the netting. Vance can't get there, and it goes off the back of a patron. Right off the back. So count goes to no balls and two strikes. That was a direct hit to an elderly fan sitting here next to the fence. Hutchinson settles back in as the ball drifts over the fence and out of play. Trying to reach safely for the second time here in the second. Lifts this one skyward. Ratliff should have a play. Vance calls her off. She gets over and makes a dandy catch at the fence. One away. Excuse me, two down in the inning, my mistake. Gabby Oborn to the plate now. She reached on a hit by pitch as well. This one's off the end of the bat, a two-hopper to Ratliff. She'll pick it up, step on the bag, and that ends the inning. So the Red Devils go quiet in the second, but they lead it 4-0 on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www.fnbgrayson.com. First National Bank, member FDIC. Not only is State Senator Robin Webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom, but your State Senator Robin Webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district. Robin Webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike. Whether it's in Frankfurt or here at home in her district, know that Robin Webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes. State Senator Robin Webb drives harder every day to make Kentucky a better place to work, live, and have fun. Six, seven, and eight do up this inning for the Rams. Bernie Pomplin and Ratliff, four nothing as we go to the home second. Happy to have you along with us here on a beautiful night for softball here in Ramland. Bailey Bernie to lead things off the center fielder for the Rams. Bernie batting 429 on the year. Three hits, three driven in, a double, two walks. A big swing and a miss. She goes upstairs after that rise ball. Comes up empty. Patel back to work, the 0-1. That one's low for a ball. Count Eve is at 1-1. One 1-1 one offering. This one's slapped over to the first base side in a foul ball. 1-2. And again, no question on that one. It was definitely foul.
Bernie settles back in. Patel ready to go back to work. The center fielder down one ball and two strikes. The pitch. Tries to slow that one down and bring it in low, but it misses two and two. One thing to note for the batters this season, they are required. The wristband systems have to be worn on the wrist. What a concept. They can no longer be in the back pocket or on the belt. 2-2. Two -two. Fisted over toward the shortstop, backing up at the collar and making the catch there is Paige Hutchinson, one down. And I, I, I don't see that too often in softball, the where you run into the issue with the wristbands not being worn on the wrist. In baseball, it's awful. You know, it's like they're putting it in their back pocket with everything else that's back there. They're three batting gloves, they're mittens, they're Evo shields. It just takes so much time to go through it, which slows the game down even more than it already is. Lily Poplin steps in. She's behind nothing and one. The 0-1. That one comes in and hits her. Trying to run it in on the hands. So a hit batter with one out here in the second has a base runner aboard. Into the plate is the first baseman, Savannah Ratliff. Ratliff, one of the three seniors on this year's squad, batting 167. One hit, one walk. Irma Kinalax and Reagan Mackey, the three seniors this year. First pitch screwball into the outside corner are called strike. The 0 one this one's a floater over in between the third and shortstop. It's going to fall in for an infield single. Smith tried to go up and get it. Payet Hutchinson was on the back side of it, and it falls in safely. So Ratliff with her second hit of the season, and that brings in Shelby Gauze, the eighth grader. And Scott Axton's going to bring all these players together. We'll go back to the top of the order if Gauls reaches. 125 hitter on the season. One hit, one double, a walk as well. Rams would love to try to find a way to dent the scoreboard here. Left two in scoring position in the first. Now we've got two on, one in scoring position with only one out here in the second. The Rams' second baseman settles in as Patel's ready to go back to work. That one's down underneath the catcher. She'll come up and sling it toward third base. Poplin was not moving. And Gauls is ahead 1-0. Gauls made a great play on a ball hit out in between her and the second base bag to force a runner out at second base back in the second. That's at the knees for a call and strike. Count evens one on one. The one one. She bloops this one out to shallow center field. That one finds its way down. They'll come quickly to third, but it's not in time, and the bases are juiced here in the fur in the second inning for the Rams. Right in front of the center fielder, Ava Howard. And back to the top of the order we go and Brenna Wellman. Now back the Wellman led things off in the home first with a walk. So a great chance here for the Rams. Three on, only one out. Infield comes in, outfield. Pretty much straight away and shallow except for left field. The first pitch to Wellman misses down and in for a ball. Wellman Mackey and Vance set to go now. Great part of the order to have up with three ducks on the ponds for the Ram. The 
1-0 misses high, 2-0. Patel, long look in after that. Rise ball didn't find the top of the zone. Poplin over at third, Ratliff at second, Gauls over at first. 2-0, high ball three. Wellman one pitch away from earning her second walk of the ball game, which would also provide a, an RBI and let the Rams dent the scoreboard. The 3-0 at the top of the zone for a cold strike, three and one. The old get it over pitch. Wemmel settles herself back in the right-handed side. 3-1, fisted into the net, and it's a full count to the shortstop. Wemmel only a sophomore. One of three on this year's team. Big opportunity here for Patel. Fouled straight back again. Count hangs at three balls and two strikes. Slow roller down the third base side. That's a foul ball. No questions here, folks. That one was easily foul by a good two feet. Don't need to tweet about it, Matt Sparks. And you, here's the thing. With turf service, you can't blame the lines being crooked any longer. Their, their lines are not going to change ever. Okay, as long as this surface is down, it's going to be there. I've seen some crooked lines in my times around the diamonds. That's for certain. Another payoff pitch. That's a called strike three right down the pipe. Two down. And Wellman knew it as she just started back toward the dugout. So it brings in Peyton Mackey. Mackey 0 for 1, struck out, struck out looking her first time through. So Patel picks up her second strike out of the ball game. First pitch on the outer half of the plate for a call and strike, 0 1. You leave five runners on base in two innings. That's a tough pill to swallow. I don't care who you're playing. She goes upstairs and chases that one, and quickly Mackey's behind, nothing in two. Mackey, one of those three sophomores on the team. Kennedy Logan rounds out the. 10th grade class. I would not be surprised if Patel doesn't go back up there again. She did, but tried to work away. It misses one and two. Good miss pitch there by the senior. Headed off to Wilmington College up in Ohio. Here's the one, two. Down and in. Two balls and two strikes. 4-0, Russell in front after four big ones in the first. Two RBI, double by Patel. Pushed across the first two runs. 2-2, two -two, down the right field line. That one's all the way to the wall. That's going to bring in one and two. Here comes the runner from second, sliding in safely as Shelby Gauze. It's going to be a three RBI triple by Peyton Mackey. And the Rams have trimmed the deficit to one with the one swing of the bat from the sophomore. Poked it into the best parlor to the ballpark. Gall's kind of paused coming around third. Started to go back and then went on as Mackey was breathing down her backside of trying to get her to third base for the triple. So all of a sudden we get ourselves a new ball game as Destiny Goins comes out of the visitors dug out and has a quick word with her team. So a two out bases clearing dot triple for Mackey. And now Callie Vance, and I would not be surprised to see four and put her on. I would. Nothing against Devanna. I would even probably walk Devanna and go after 
Reagan Mackey on the back side of that. They're going to pitch to her. She represents the go-ahead run. Tying runs out at third. And the first pitch misses high for a ball. Vanson her first time through. Roped a double off the wall and straight away center. That's a pitch to the outside corner, one and one. The one, one. Misses high, two and one. Trying to stay upstairs and couldn't get her to offer. Tying run at third. Two down in the inning. The Rams are within one after the bases clearing triple for Mackey. The two one for Patel. That's outside three and one. Again, it's, it's not that she's missing. That's where she's trying to get the pitches to go, trying to get Vance to extend the zone. She is way too disciplined to play for stuff of that nature. Such a great hitter. The junior waits patiently. Patel, the 3-1 offering. She lifts this one skyward down the third base side and foul into the bullpen. Count goes full. Bella Hall giving chase, but she had a long part of real estate to cover there. She's playing well off the line over in almost into the gap in left center more than left field. I'm actually surprised of how shallow that Howard is playing. Here's the payoff pitch. Fouled away. Tell a long look into the dugout as she gets the sign for the wristband. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. 4-3 ball game. Lifted skyward, right side. Dropping back Cameron in foul territory. Reaches up, makes the grab, and ends the inning. But the Rams dent the scoreboard. They push across three runs on three hits. They leave a runner. We go to the third, 4-3 Russell after this on Cool TV. JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with a vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro, Kentucky. Rev up your autumn adventure and refuel at Clark's Pump and Shop. Make a pit stop and treat yourself to our assortment of snacks and drinks. Clark's Pump and Shop has the perfect treats to satisfy your fall cravings. From our seasonal lattes and iced coffees to specialty donuts and desserts. Don't just fuel up your vehicle, fuel your taste buds at Clark's Pump and Shop, your ultimate road companion. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Four three as we go to the top of inning number three here on a beautiful evening in Ramland. Racing gets three back in the in the inning. They left the tying run at third, and Audrey Patel gets out of a big jam with inducing a foul flyout to the catcher Cali Vance. Three four and five do up this inning for the Red Devils Smith Patel and Hall. So Lily Smith will start things off. She reached on an error to Wellman back of that four-run first inning. Interesting thing about both of these lineups, too. Nobody has a lefty. Just don't see that often. Here's a ball roped out to straightaway center field, burning at the wall, reaches up, see ya. Lily Smith takes the first pitch offered and sends it into a vapor trail into the fence out in a left center field. And Russell adds to its lead, it's five to three. Bernie was there and out of real estate and just kind of reached up, knew she couldn't jump to get it. That ball was well struck. 
So the Red Devils get one back. And Audrey Patel to the plate now. She had a two RBI double back in the first inning that staked herself that four nothing lead. This one's rocked, but straight away center field. Can of corn for Bernie as she settles under it. Makes the catch. One down. I saw a thing yesterday. It was interesting that it popped up, but the kind of where the term can of corn came from, it goes all the way back in the old days of when the grocery stores had all the canned goods and they stacked them so high up on the top to where the customers couldn't get them off there, and they would take a stick, and they would knock them off, and then they would catch them into their aprons. And they said it was like a catching a can of corn. So they, they just shortened it when it went into baseball and softball as a lazy fly ball was as easy as catching as a can of corn. That's where that came from. Baseball hit softball history for you. A little cloud cover settling in for the first time tonight. Still... In the low 70s, a bit breezy in the evening as well. Two balls and no strikes to Bella Hall. All singled her last time through. The left fielder settles back in, 2-0. Sends this one straight back in a foul ball. Great crowd on hand here tonight. Both sides represented well. Say we'll have another packed house here on Thursday night. It'll be a little cooler Thursday night, though. We'll see it in the, probably the high 50s by the time we play get play ball. 2-1 misses high, 3-1. has not walked a batter, but has issued two hit by pitches. Here's the 3-1. Fisted over to Ratliff. She'll make the scoop and the step on the bag. Two down. Definitely a fair ball. No questions. Now, I will ask Savannah tomorrow at school because she's on that side. Obviously, she wasn't in that play when, when – uh, Reagan grounded out. Now, of course, if you ask Reagan, it was fair all day or foul all day long. Doesn't matter what the umpire says. So base is empty, two down. Ava Howard to the plate. She's 0 for 1. She grounded into a fielder's choice on that nice play by Galls out at second base. Here's the 1 0. This was a rocket, but right at the left fielder. Dives in front of Mackey and gets down. Howard on her horse. She'll pull up at second base with a stand-up two-out double. And Russell has something going again here in the third. Mackey tried to make a diving catch, but just could not get there. So the fourth hit of the ball game for the Red Devils. And Reese Cameron to the plate. Cameron struck out swinging her first time through today. That one misses upstairs for a ball, want to know. Honaker in the on-deck circle would go next. This one's lifted skyward, Vance giving chase. That one's getting over top of the... Netting and out of play. Yeah, it's a dangerous spot to be over on that side of the fence area tonight. We've already had one patron hit in the back just below the neck and made a fan there that made a nice diving stab to keep that one off of someone. One one, that one gets past. Vance starts to fire down toward third, but that had the umpire dancing for cover. So the wild pitch moves Howard out to third. So the sixth run of the ball game now 60 feet away 
and Reese Cameron ahead, two and one. Grub back to work. Down and in, nice stop there by Vance to hold the runner out at third base. But Cameron now ahead, three balls and one strike. Grubb has not issued a walk. She's hit two, the first two that she faced in this ball game. Here's the 3-1. Misses inside, ball four. There's her first walk, and they're at the corners. And Carson Honaker to the plate. Strikeout victim to end that four-run first inning. Cameron will put on a some type of a wrist guard, if you will. She sends this one out of play straight back. Please return all foul balls to the concession stand for a free piece of bubble gum. Russell with five runs on four hits. Brace on three runs on four hits. A lone error in the column of the Ramblers. Downstairs. Cameron will take second base without a, a throw. So now two runners in scoring position. If Honaker could come up with a ball down in the outfield, a chance to extend this now five to three lead. Russell got four in the first, Rams answered with three in the second. And all of a sudden, Grubb struggling to find the zone. She's behind two and one. Here's a rocket right at Mackey that gets past her off of her hand and into left field. Here comes the throw to the plate. That one airmails all the way up against the fence. Vance knocks it down. It's going to be a two RBI double, and it's seven to three. Mackey's, I think she took that ball off of her fingertip as it went flying past her. It was an absolute frozen rope right at the third baseman who was playing in just in front of the bag. So the fifth hit of the ball game for Russell makes it 7-3 as they do a little two-out magic here as Honaker picks up the big hit. Athletic training staff there attending to the senior third baseman for the Rams. She's tough as nails. Old. You're not going to get her out of this ball game, I'll promise you that. She'd have to be missing a digit, and she'd probably still fight with you to stay on the field. So she's going to shake it off and stay out there. So Ella Wilson at the bottom of the order. She's 0 for 1. She flew out to Bernie out in straightaway center field her first time through. That started the second inning, which Russell went in order. They've sent seven. This will be the seventh batter to the plate here in the third. And here's a ball out into the gap. That one falls in for a base hit. Here comes the throw to the plate. Vance can't make the stab, and moving up on the throw is Ella Wilson, 8-3 Russell. So credit Wilson with an RBI single. And she moves up to second base on the throw to the plate. So the sixth hit of the ball game, and back to the top of the order we go in Paige Hutchinson. So Wilson trades places with Honaker. Now Hutchinson, 0 for 1, hit by a pitch and flat out to Vance in foul territory. She's ahead two and nothing. Grubb gave up the leadoff home run to Smith to start the inning, then got two quick outs. And then it's gone 
double walk, double single. And four runs across that have extended the lead now to five, the largest of the ball game. After Raceland played at three in the home second to pull back within one. 2-1. Slow roller out to Wellman. She'll pick and throw, and that'll end the inning. But the Red Devils do some two-out damage. As they played four on four hits, they leave a runner, and they lead at 8-3 as we go to the bottom of inning number three after this on Cool TV. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osman Pharmacy and Grill today. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Go to the bottom of inning number three. Eight to three, Russell after plating four runs in the third. Do up this inning for the Rams, four, five, and six. The Van Grove will lead things off, flew out to third base her first time through. First pitch misses down and in. So after the Rams get three back, Russell plates four in the visiting third. That's a blister foul off to the first base netting. One ball and one strike to Devanna Grubb. There's a ball through the hole, left side base hit. And a leadoff single for the pitcher. Fifth hit of the baseball, or the softball game, excuse me, for Raceland. So that brings in Reagan Mackey. Mackey grounded out on that questionable, still questionable call over at first base to end the inning. Carly. Carly Fannin checking in to run over at first base. Mackey batting 286 on the season. One double, she's got a home run as well, a grand slam in the season opener against Rowan County. This one's in the pellets, not the dirt. It's going to be tough to say that now, not saying ball in the dirt, because even here and over at the uh, baseball field, there's no dirt. It is pellets and artificial surface all the way around. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss. It was really interesting watching the process. Um, I've got a time-lapse video that I'm putting together from start to finish for both fields. I'll debut those after we get back from spring break. 1-1. One, one. This was a rope out in the gap in right center field. That one's all the way to the fence. Fannin's on her horse. She's going to come all the way around to score. Mackey holds up out at second base. Fannin comes in safely. It's an RBI double by Reagan Mackey. And the Rams plate one here in the third. They cut, they cut it to 8-4. to four. Nice piece of hitting there with Mackey to take it the opposite direction. So now Bailey Bernie climbs in. She's 0 for 1, flew out to the shortstop her first time through. Great speed by Bailey on that six hole, the Rams center fielder. 
She sends this one to the moon, but right at Hutchison, she comes in toward the circle, makes the grab for the first down of the inning. Grayson Sporty Goods instant replay there, just because my producer had to get one in. So Lily Poplin to the plate. She was hit by a pitch her first time through. A four and a third here with an out. She sends this one into the gap, right center field, back at the wall, at the warning track, top of the fence, it's gone! <laughs> Lily Poplin sells, yells Yahtzee! A two-run blast! by the seventh grader. And once again, we got ourselves a ball game, it's 8-6. That hit off the cap of the fence out in right center field and hopped over out on the grass area there against US 23. Producer, that was a nice replay right there. Did you get, oh, there it is, look at there. Right on cue, off the top of the fence. I'll even give a hat tip to my camera operator down on the bottom. That was a good job there. Might even see that one tomorrow on our YouTube shorts. So 8-6, Russell with a two-point conversion, leading it here after the missed extra point by the Rams. And Savannah Ratliff goes upstairs and comes up empty. Ratliff one for one. Singled over to shallow left field last time through. That one's downstairs. The count evens at one and one. That is the orange monster. I like it. The one one. Chase that one well out of the zone, one and two. It had the orange part of the monster, though. I mean, it was on the cap. I'm with you. I'm with you, Matt. I feel the. I feel the love. Tries to run that one in and misses two and two. Knowing what I know about Patel, she'll try to go right back up that ladder here. Great look in there from your center field shot. Senior ready to lock in against the senior for the Rams. The two two. Goes upstairs, and that time Ratliff lays off. Now you got to be disciplined here to not chase something out of the zone. Patel is still liable to go upstairs on you again. Here's a payoff pitch. And she went upstairs and got her to go. Two down. And that brings in Shelby Gauss. Gauss singled, came around to score on that bases clearing triple by Peyton Mackey. 8-6, Rams trail it by two here in the third. Russell with four run first and thirds, racing with three runs second and thirds. That pitch was a mile off the plate for a called strike. We'll have to get K-Zone going here. That is wise, Carver. He'll go back and look at it. He'll text me tomorrow and tell me I was wrong. It's okay. The 0 1. That's a strike. 0 and 2. Bases clear. Two down in the inning. 8 6. You're in the home third. The 0 2. This one's off the end of the bat, right at the right fielder. Honaker drifts over, makes the catch, and that'll end the inning. But the Rams plate three. Two of those coming off the long ball by Lily Poplin, and we're at 8-6 through three full innings. We go to the fourth after this on Cool TV. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best 
around. Where does your money go? When you bank with us, your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan. A real estate agent sells a house. They get a commission. They deposit it with us. We use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers. Hometown people helping each other grow. That's what it's all about. First in People's Bank and Trust Company, member FDIC. We are the home office. Top of the fourth inning we go. 8-6 our score. Eight runs, six hits, no errors for Russell. Six runs, seven hits, an error for Raceland. And this inning, two up for Russell. Two, three, and four. Gabby Oborn to lead things off. Oborn hit by a pitch and scored in the first. She flew out, or excuse me, she grounded out to Ratliff to end the second. Oborn, Smith, and Patel, the three to go here in the visiting fourth inning. First pitch from Grubb misses up and away for a ball. Oborn snaps that one, tries to bunt it and sends it straight back foul. Oborn a heck of a basketball player, played kind of as the sixth man for Mandy Lane off the bench for the 16th region champion wrestle Lady Red Devils. Went down to state tournament, came up empty in their first round game against McCracken County. Really had a great season, especially the second half of her season there. She was, sometimes she was just getting in rhythm and come off the bench and she was the three point machine. She's behind one and two. Grubb would like to work a quick inning if she can, and she goes way upstairs and got Oborn to chase for the strikeout. Third strikeout of the ball game for Grubb, and that brings in to the plate the player that started that four-run third inning, Lily Smith. She went yard on the first pitch offered to her back in the top half of third inning number three. She's one for one, reached on an error and scored back in the first. A swing and a miss. Sun beating down on the playing surface again. A little bit of shade being cast off of the first base dug out there, right in between the line and the circle. You can see there on your screen. And the Rams will be on the road on Wednesday to Chesapeake. Back here Thursday, we'll be with you with Greenup County in town. 535 first pitch. This one's lifted skyward. Schedule for 5.30. We know that usually means a little bit later than that. We'll be with you beginning at 5.20. Again, it's the first time with us here on Cool TV. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you see something you like. Hit that bell. You'll get a notification each time we put out new material. Smith behind one and two with one out here in the fourth. It's a hot chopper over to Mackey at third. She'll fire it across to Ratliff who... Finds the bag and makes the catch. Two down. Look at your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay there. You see Ratliff has to kind of stretch and then go back and find the bag, but a great play by her. So with two down, the base is empty. The pitcher, Audrey Patel, to the plate, one for two. Had a two RBI double back at the four run first. She flew out to Bernie out in center field in the third. Nice pitch. Might have been just a tad low for a ball. 1-0. and I did look into getting K-Zone for our broadcast. It came in at a hefty price tag of a mil. There's a rope out onto left field and a two-out single for Patel. She picks up her second hit of the ball game. If I can find a sponsor, I might be able to get it in, but it's not looking promising. Seventh hit of the ball game. We'll get a courtesy runner for Patel. As Taylor Groves will take over for the pitcher and in steps Bella Hall. That one gets past the catcher and out to second base goes Groves.
So a runner in scoring position with two down here in the fourth. Hall one for two, singled in the first, and then grounded out to Ratliff over at third. Nice pitch, misses low, 2-0. Oh. Both teams with seven hits in the ball game. Rams with a lone error there in the first inning. Oh, roped foul down the third base side, out of play. Really ramp things up after spring break with our coverage here with race on East Carter, West Carter, and Lewis County, both on baseball and softball. Two one, high right, for a ball, three and one. Of the sixty-five high school games in the regular season, we have scheduled sixty-five. One of those come after April the 8th. So about a collection of five, five, five weeks there to squeeze all those in. 3-1, out of play, first base side. Count goes full. 63rd District Baseball Tournament this year. Not for certain. I know that the region is in the 63rd, and I've heard people tell me Lewis County, I've heard some say Russell. I've heard some say we're going to redraw. But I know the 16th region is in the 63rd this year, and I'm pretty sure softball's in the 64th for the region. Payoff pitch. Chopped foul. We were in the 63rd for softball last year. It was at Lewis County. 62nd had baseball up in Morgan County. Those were some long days. I was glad I was in Vanceburg. One on, out at second base, a full count with two down in the fourth. Grubb spins it to the plate. It's lifted weakly, but right at Mackey out in left field. She'll settle in right at the warning track, make the catch, and that ends the inning. Russell threatens, but they don't get any back. It's, four, it's eight to six as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning after this on Cool TV. Primary Plus is celebrating 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With over 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and our patients. The Primary Plus name means primary care plus so much more. Offering extended services such as women's health, pediatrics, dental, counseling, diabetes management, infusion services, and on-site pharmacy that offers free delivery. Primary Plus believes in connecting health care for you and your family and is always welcoming new patients. Learn more at primaryplus.net. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, this scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning, 8-6 Russell. We go back to the top of the order for the Rams. Brenna Wellman to lead things off. Wellman 0 for 1, walked in the first. She was stranded at third. Also has a strikeout to her credit. That was in the second inning. A bit of a breeze kicking up once again here at the ballpark, but a beautiful night. Here in this latter part of March. Patel back to work, the 1-0. That one dives down and in and misses for a ball, 2-0. Well, it's done a really good job through this ball game of getting ahead in the count. She worked herself on with that leadoff walk in the first. Got ahead in the second, but then ended up striking out. Saw her at school today, and she was just walking up and down the hall saying, game day, game day. That's all she would say. 2-0 pitch, splits the plate in half, 2-1. and one. one of my partners that worked with me last year, he was calling some games when I had all the family stuff going on with my wife's family. And his first game here, he, he called her, accidentally called her Brianna. And I was like, first off, her name's Brennan. Second of all, you're in trouble. 
2-1. She reaches for this one, little lazy fly ball coming over and making the grab on the line is Hall, one down. Hall did a great job there chasing that one down on your Grayson Sporty Goods instant replay. Right in fair territory. So that brings in Peyton Mackey's one for two. She had a bases clearing triple her last time through. I like her walkout music too. Tell a long look over to the dugout for the sign from the former head coach for the Ramblers of Destiny Goins. Here's a fly ball over to the left side. Making a great catch there was Bella Hall. Two balls hit her way and she grabs them both as she runs that one into the wall. Another Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay on this one. Nice play there by the right field, or the left fielder, excuse me. And I'll, let me go ahead and fix that while I'm at it. That was Ava Howard. They have moved her from center field. That was the adjustment it looks like that's happened because that was Ava Howard, not Bella Hall. So to the plate is Callie Vance. Pitch misses down and away for a ball. We need our, our first base camera operator to check the two players in. Looks like Honaker is in center now. And I can't tell who the right fielder is. Here's a rocket through the hole, left side of base hit. So Vance on for the second time in the ball game. So Rife on. Now that's Honaker still in right. Cannot tell who the center fielder is. It may have been it may have been Bella Hall that went from right to, or from left to center. So the Vanna Grob in. She's one for two. So they just they moved Howard and Hall in that last inning. Yeah, proved out to be a really good move. The ball off the end of the bat and out of play. Count one and one. Of course, you know, I, I'm still recovering from basketball, so I did not have my stuff loaded up in my case today with my binoculars, or I'd be able to tell all that. But we've got these great things out on the field called cameras. Starting to get some of them in use. The 1-1 one, one to Grubb. That one gets all the way to the backstop. So the wild pitch moves Rife out to second base. So the tying run at the plate of Devanna Grubb. Reagan Mackey stands in the on-deck circle, would go next. Rob goes upstairs and chases the high cheese. Two and two. Cotter on the inside corner looking for a called strike three to end the inning. The Rams leave a runner on one hit. We played four, eight, six, Russell after this on Cool TV. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Catlettsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender.
If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. They carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. Go to the top of the fifth inning. 8-6 Russell. 6-7 and 8 do up this inning. Howard, Cameron, and Honaker. Ava Howard, two nice catches after getting moved from center field over to left field. Back in that inning. One of them, she crashed into the wall. First pitch misses high for a ball. Fairland leads Huntington St. Joe 25-0 after three. Somebody throw the towel. The three-inning rule in Kentucky was the greatest thing they ever come up with. <laughs> Off the end of the bat, a two-hopper out to Wellman. Strong throw, one down. So it brings in Reese Cameron. She's 0 for 1. Struck out in the first, walked and scored in the third. Swing and a miss. Screwball right past her there. Nothing in one. I mean, it's got to be a different look for Destiny Goins, too, because when she was with Raceland, she would always coach from the first base side. She did not go to the third base box. I forgive her a hard time about that because now she's, she's, what it is is she just stays close to her dugout. She didn't like the walk. I'll text her tomorrow and tell her about that. Say, what happened? Why didn't you come to the first base side today? 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. It's got to be a bittersweet homecoming for her coming back to Raceland after spending a year here as the head coach. And, of course, all the girls had that relationship with her, and then she decided to leave to take over after Nick, Nikki Beak resigned at Russell as Grubb throws the heater past her. So Carson Honaker, one for two, doubled her last time through. Grubb trying to work a clean inning for only the second time in the ball game. She went in order back in the second. This one's lifted out of play. Hey, grab that ball and bring us a couple of waters when you come back. 0-1. Oh Two up in the home fifth for the Rams. Five, six, and seven. Mackey, Bernie, and Poplin. Down and in. Count evens at one and one. Little blooper out in front of the circle. Grubb comes in and makes a dandy catch and ends the inning. That's a tough play there coming out of the circle, but Grubb makes it with ease as the Red Devils go in order to end the fifth. We go to the bottom of inning number five. Russell in front, 8-6 after this on Cool TV. <laughs> Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporty Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size, with a wide selection of tackle for Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Border Sporty Goods, US 60 West, in Ashland. 
River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, 7 days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com go to the bottom of inning number 586 Russell 5, 6, and 7 do up Reagan Mackey to start things off and she looks at a pitch in there at the knees for a call and strike 0 and 1 Mackey up in the front half of the box partially open stands for the third baseman Chops this one foul to the backstop. Mackey behind, nothing and two. Had an RBI double back in the third inning. Came around to score on the home run from Poplin. Four runs in the first and the third for Russell. Three runs in the second and third for Raceland. Mackey lays off that one, one and two. Comes inside at the belt. Had Mackey jumping back quietly, but she goes to the dugout with very little opposition. One down on the backwards K. Fourth strikeout of the ball game. One in each inning for Patel thus far. Second looking. So brings in Bailey Bernie, who's 0 for 2. Pair of flyouts to the shortstop. She lifts this one straight up in the infield inside the circle. Patel, she'll make the grab, two down. So it brings in Lily Poplin. She went off the top of the monster for her first home run of the year. First one misses high for a ball. The 1-0. Inside nearly hits her. 2-0. Base is empty, two down. Both pitchers trying to work clean fifth inning. The 2-0. Inside, maybe a bit low, 3-0. Savannah Ratliff stands in the on-deck circle, would go next. Down the pipe, three and one. Inside ball four, no, called strike. That was a very delayed strike. Three and two. Poplin settles back in for Patel's 3-2 offering. Base is empty, two down in the fifth. Here it comes. Goes upstairs and gets her to chase the rise ball and comes up empty. So both teams go quietly in the fifth. It's 8-6 as we head to inning number six here on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring 2017 National Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring and Greenup. 
606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring, 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. I didn't ever give you anything. <laughs> we go to the sixth inning, 8-6, Russell. Nine in the top, due up this inning for the visiting Red Devils. Ella Wilson will leave things off. She singled back in the third. Wilson, Hutchinson, and Oborn, the three scheduled to go here. Getting late at the ballpark. A scoring frenzy through the first three innings and in goose eggs since then. There's a ball lifted to Skyward. Wellman dropping back in a shallow left field. Reaches up, makes the catch. One down. My producer forgot to switch. <laughs> Back to the top of the order we go. Paige Hutchison's 0 for 2. Hit by pitch and scored in the first. Flew out to the catcher in the second and then into the inning on a ground out to Wellman out at short in the third. Most of the inner half of the infield shaded now by the dugout. That sun starts to drift downward. And misses down and in for a ball, 1-0. Eight runs, seven hits, no errors for Russell. Six runs, eight hits, an error for Raceland. Good pitch, misses inside though, 2-0. Chopper foul, third base side. Two and one. One down here in the sixth. Off the end of the bat, a slow hopper out to Mackey. She throws a laser beam over to Ratliff, who scoops it up. Two down. So Gabby over and over two steps in. Hit by a pitch and scored in the first. Grounded out to end the second and struck out to open the fourth. Trying to bunt this one and goes foul. Last hit she gave up was a single to Patel with two outs in the fourth. Two, a fly out, a ground out, a strike out, two fly outs and a ground out. Yeah. Eight maids of milking or something like that. Here's a chopper off the plate. Mackey fields it at the hip. Nice play. And a clean inning here in the sixth. Mackey made that one look easy on the little hot chopper there off the top of the plate. She fires a bullet over there to, Matt, to Ratliff as Russell goes in order in the sixth. 8-6 as we go to the bottom of inning number six after this on Cool TV. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character 
and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with a vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro, Kentucky. Bottom of inning number six, eight, six, eight, nine on the top. Do up this inning for the Rams. Ratliff Galls and Wellman getting late here at the ballpark. Do up in the visiting seventh. It'll be three, four, and five, Smith, Patel, and Hall. So Savannah Ratliff, one for two, steps in. Struck out her last time through and comes up empty on the first offering. One of the three seniors for this year's Rams. Herma Kinalax and Reagan Mackey. Patel back to work with the on one. This one's lifted skyward, giving look over at first base is Cameron. She'll make the catch in front of the Rams dugout, one down. So it brings in Shelby Gons, the second baseman for the Rams. Singled and scored in the second inning. Flew out to end the third. First pitch misses down and in. Interesting approach, too, going with no batting gloves. Old school. You don't see that often. This one's out of play, first base side. Count evens at one and one. Both teams off to the beach next week. Raceland headed to Fort Myers, or Fort Walton Beach, excuse me. Six games on the slate down there. They're playing a total of 10 for JV games as well. Foul back. They'll play Corbin and Henry County on Sunday, Middlesboro on Monday, oh, South Oldham on Tuesday. They'll have an off day on Wednesday. Owensboro on Thursday and then Russell County on Friday and then come back home. And then their next home game is on April the 12th against uh, Lincoln County and Sims Valley. That's part of the Tri-State uh, show Showcase. Here's a rope out to straightaway center field, but Hall gives it a look. Two down. Play Sims Valley in Lincoln County from West Virginia on Friday night the 12th. Then Boyle County at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. You know, the one thing we don't have to worry about this year with the Tri-State Showcase is every stinking year it rains, it comes in buckets, we get flooded. And this year that's not going to be the case. As Wellman flies out right in front of the plate. And that ends the inning. Both teams have gone in order for the last two innings. We head to the seventh, 8-6, after this on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www.fnbgrayson.com. First National Bank, member FDIC. Not only is State Senator Robin Webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom, but your State Senator Robin Webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district. Robin Webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike. Whether it's in Frankfurt or here at home in her district, know that Robin Webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes. State Senator Robin Webb strives harder every day to make Kentucky a better place to work, live, and have fun. Top of the seventh inning, 8-6 our score. We've not had any runs since the third. 
And in fact, the last two innings, both teams have gone in order. So three, four, and five do up this inning for Russell. The Rams will counter with two, three, and four in the home seventh, hoping they only need two. So Lily Smith, one for three, steps in. She had a leadoff home run in the third inning, reached and scored on an error back in that four run first. And she grounded out to Mackey her last time through. There's a chopper out to Wellman at short, a pick and a throw, one down. All of a sudden, Grubb just mowing them down. That's eight in a row and 10 of her last 11. Patel disrupting that streak with a single in the fourth with two outs. She's two for three tonight. Trying to pick up a big district win on the Rams on the road. That's a dart on the outside corner. Nothing in one. I'm playing her way in the hole over on the left side. Trying to drop in the old drop ball changeup, if you will, there that comes up empty one on one. You could land a small aircraft right now between Wellman and Galls at short and second base. Not expecting Patel to go up the middle. Here's the one one. She chases that one out of the zone and fouls it away. One ball and two strikes. Four runs in the first and the third for Russell. Raceland answered with three in the second and third. That's where we stand in an 8-6 ball game. Here's a ball out to right field, dropping back at the fence. That one's off the wall in front of McKenna Lax. She'll fire it in and hold Patel to a single with her third hit of the ball game. That was a tough play for Lax as she was right up against the fence when that ball hit. So we got a courtesy runner for the pitcher as Taylor Groves will come on. And Bella Hall, now the center fielder, steps in. Before she gets in the box, Audrey Patel has a couple of words with her. All one for three. Singled and drove in a run back in the first inning. Grounded out to first and flew out to left in the third and fourth innings. She lifts this one skyward. Gall's giving a look out in shallow right field, makes the grab. Two down. So it brings in Ava Howard, who's one for three. Howard with a double back in the third inning, which the Red Devils plated four innings, or four runs, excuse me, in the inning. That's off the upright pole that's just to my right for a foul ball. If you flinched, you're done. Get out of the press box. I was doing a game up at Marshall last week, and one of my friends was behind the backstop taking pictures, and a foul ball went straight in the net, and he flinched. And I was on TV, and I texted him. I said, you're fired. You flinched. He said, the only thing I saw was a ball coming in my viewfinder. One and one. Felicia's probably had the worst luck of anybody. She got a light fixture broken on top of her over at Ashland a couple, last year on a foul ball. She was covering for the paper. It went straight up, and it was the light pole on the third base side right by home plate, and it caught the glass, and it just r started raining shards of glass. There was an elderly lady that was sitting there in a, ch in a chair watching the game, and most of it landed in her lap. 2-1, 3-1. She took a ball off of her head in a Marshall game one time, and she said she wanted to cry so bad, but she wasn't about to flinch on the field. And I mean, it was a rocket. The hazards of this job to get your shot. 3-1, down and in, ball four, and there's two on with two out here in the seventh. For Grubb, her second walk of the ball game, fourth free pass she's given up. So that brings in Reese Cameron, who's 0 for 2. 
Struck out in the first inning. Walked and scored in the third. Struck out in the, in the fifth. She's ahead now, 1-0. That's a nice pitch in there for a cold strike. Count evens at one and one. Rams have the good part of their order coming to the plate. Two, three, and four in the home seventh. Hoping to need only two. Russell with two on, but two out here in the seventh. Grupp tries to sneak that one in there, but it misses inside, maybe a little bit up, two and one. Got a big smile there from Grubb. Downstairs, three and one. Host the infield now covered there in shade. A little bit of sun still out in the outfield over in left field side. Three balls and a strike, two on for the Red Devils. This one's fisted toward the second baseman, Goss fields and throws, and that ends the inning. 8-6 as we go to the bottom of inning number seven. Rams have up two, three, and four, needing two. We'll find out if they can do it when we return after this on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at OsmondPharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osmond Pharmacy and Grill today. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. Two, three, and four to empty this inning for the Rams in the home seventh. Needing at least two to force extras. Three will win it. Peyton Mackey, Callie Vance, and Devanna Grubb. Three scheduled in this inning. Mackey one for three with that basis clearing triple back in the second. She sends this one back and out of play. Chopped foul as she goes upstairs and chases the ball out of the zone. Russell trying to hand raise on its first loss of the season. Rams 5-0, Russell 3-2. More importantly, trying to pick up a key district win. And on the road at that. Blow it up, buddy. 0-2. Upstairs, swing and a miss. Strike three as she got her on the rise ball. One down. And in comes Callie Vance. You'd certainly like to have a runner aboard with her at the plate. As again, one big swing by her right now still leaves the Rams needing one. She's two for three, singled and doubled in the ball game. She flew out to end the second. Lays off that pitch. It was in her eyes. It's a called strike either way. 0-1. That might have got my strike zone. I'm six foot four. Callie is not. The 0 1. That one nearly rolls to the plate, one and one. That's one thing Patel does a really good job with is she mixes up your eye level. She'll start high, she goes low, she'll work outside, come back inside, always making you move your eye level. And that's a sign of a really good pitcher. That's why she's had success, that's why she's going on to the next, next level of play. Honaker giving chase over on the foul side of things as she makes the grab, and there's two down. Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay here is size it up nicely there. So the Rams down to their final out and Devanna Grubb to the plate. Grubb one for three, singled and scored in a third. 
A fly out and a strikeout looking to end the fourth. Rams down two, need base runners here. Russell's going to get out of here with a victory. First pitch, backs grub off the plate, 1-0. Reagan Mackey in the on-deck circle would love an opportunity to go at it one more time. And a big RBI double back in the third inning. Two and zero. Oh. Rams going to need a little two out magic here. Down eight six. All the runs, all fourteen of them coming in the first three innings. This one's lifted skyward in foul territory. Smith sizes it up, makes the catch, and Russell gets the win on the road. And a very enthusiastic Audrey Patel there as she goes through the meat of the order on nine pitches. And Russell takes the victory. Post game show when we return after this on Cool TV. Primary Plus is celebrating 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With over 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and our patients. The Primary Plus name means primary care plus so much more. Offering extended services such as women's health, pediatrics, dental, counseling, diabetes management, infusion services, and on-site pharmacy that offers free delivery. Primary Plus believes in connecting health care for you and your family and is always welcoming new patients. Learn more at primaryplus.net. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Go to Ashland Community and Technical College. This scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. 8-6, Russell wins, and as they'll give race on their first loss of the season, that'll move Russell to 4-2 and two on the year, 1-0 oh in district play. Raceland falls for the first time this year to 5-1. They'll go to 1-1 one one in district play. Here's how it went down. Russell played at 4 in the first. Raceland answered with 3 in the second, but Russell got 3 back in the fourth. The Rams answered with 3 more in the third. It was 8-6, and it would stay that way the rest of the way throughout the ball game. As Russell and Raceland both the pitching kind of took over and dictated the outcome there on the, the remainder part of the game as both had base runners, but neither could push anything across. Pitchers of record, both Patel and Grubb, both gave up eight hits, but uh, Patel gave up two fewer runs. Both of them gave up a home run in the contest. Patel, seven strikeouts, Grubb with four. We'll take a break. We come back, we'll look at all of our statistics and wrap things up here tonight. From Ramland, winners are the Red Devils, 8-6. We continue a postgame after this on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporting Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size with a wide selection of tackle for Bird Loop, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. 8-6, your final. Russell wins this one on the road at Raceland. Let's look at some numbers. Audrey Patel, the only player with uh, double-digit hits today. She goes three for four. She had a double. Lily Smith with the solo home run. That was her only hit of the afternoon, or evening hours, if you will. Callie Vance, the only player with two hits for Raceland. She goes two for four with a double. Reagan Mackey with a double. Peyton Mackey with a triple. Uh, Ava Howard, Audrey Patel, 
Cameron Honaker with doubles for Russell, Lily Smith, and Lily Poplin. It was the night for the Lilies. They both go yard on solo shots. Poplin goes, actually Poplin's with a two-run shot. She goes off the top of the wall out in right center field. Numbers for pitching looks like this for Patel. Seven innings, eight hits, six runs, all earned. Strikes out seven walks about her. She gave up one home run. She'll take the win. Devanna Grubb, seven innings, eight hits, eight runs, seven earned. Strikes out four, walks two. She also hit two batters. She gave up a home run. She'll suffer the loss. Final box score looks like this for Russell. Eight runs on eight hits, no errors. They left five runners on base. For Raceland, six runs, eight hits, one error. They leave four runners on base. Took us an hour and 51 minutes to decide this one. And Russell, who's to 4-2 and two on the season, but more importantly, 1-0 and oh in district play as Raceland falls to 5-1, and one, suffering their first loss on the season. And they go to 1-1 one and one in district play. We'll be back with you on Thursday night. They've got Greenup County in town, 5.30 first pitch. We'll begin with you at 5.20 on our pregame show as we get you set for the Rams and the Musketeers here before both teams head off to the beach for spring break. Hat tip to my crew tonight. Executive producer was Travis Otworth. Our camera operator on the field level was Felicia Collier. Phenomenal job by both of them here this evening. Again, your final score, Russell wins at 8-6 over Raceland. For Felicia Collier and Travis Otworth, I'm James Collier saying good night. We'll talk to you Thursday night right here on Cool TV. Thank you for watching another Raceland Rams broadcast live on Cool TV. This broadcast of Race on Rams Softball has been an exclusive sports presentation of the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV.